and uh, you take the closed system and instead of having it for a finite difference you do it for a small difference, an infinitesimally small difference so that'll be 1 minus T naught over TB del Q minus del W minus P naught DV minus T naught del Sigma so a small amount of entropy generation, a small volume change, a small amount of work transfer, a small amount of heat transfer, and a small change in exergy of the system. You then take and divide each term by the time, a small change in time, small change in time, small change in time, small change in time, and now you get a rate, a balance equation. So we have the rate at which the exergy changes in our closed system, is equal to the rate at which it flows in with the heat, the rate at which it flows out with the power or work, and if you need to have some, if it's expanding with time, we have to take off that non-useful component of boundary work, and then the rate at which exergy is being destroyed. Now this equation we don't use very often, but it's our launching point for the control volume. So if you come here, we modify that rate equation for the closed system, and the textbook doesn't give a formal derivation or modification. It just says, look, it's, it's very similar to what we did in, in the previous chapters when we did uh, from, for an energy balance. And so what happens is, is you say, we're going to do an exergy rate balance equation for a now an open system, a control volume, Almost all of our problems are steady state, so forget that term. It's steady state. So everything on the left-hand side is zero. And what you have is you have the exergy transferring in with the heat. We now, if you have steady state, it can't continue to expand. So dvdt is zero. You know, it, it, your control volume doesn't continue to expand or, or contract. And so this term just is W dot CV, they emphasize this is out of the control volume. And we just throw in these two parameters. What are they? This is the exergy transfer with the mass coming in and the exergy transfer with the mass going out. That's why they have a minus sign in front of it. I for in, E for exit, and then you still have that rate of exergy destruction right there. So now instead of having the exergy just lowercase e as if it's a closed system, you have the flow exergy, and this is the definition of the flow exergy. Hey, there's our friend enthalpy. Doesn't it look familiar? And so here is our steady state exergy balance equation for an open system, and you have the flow exergy in front and multiplying the mass flow rates. Um, often there's no sum term here, so get rid of that. Often one inlet, one outlet, and it's operating at steady state, so the m dot is just one m dot, and then you just have the difference in the flow exergies. This is very, very common. And the difference in the flow exergies, difference in enthalpy minus T naught, difference in entropies, blah. True. This, this equation right here is the one we use again and again for control volume analysis. One thing I never understand is why it has components. Why does it have what? The components that and the well because exergy is a combination of first law concepts as well as second law. Second law limits the transfer of energy between forms and this reflects that limitation so it has entropy in it. But it's primarily an energy balance. But it's the useful energy balance, knowing that some of the useful energy can be turned into unuseful energy, if that makes sense. So it can be lost. Some of the useful energy can be lost. Like they call it lost work potential, things like that.